Hey, it's Matt from the thepodcastsetup.com. Wanted to give you a quick update on how I'm using Descript as a screen recording piece of software these days. So I feel like I'm a power user of Descript at this point. I use it primarily for uh, editing podcasts, both uh, my audio stuff and my video stuff. Um, I use it for editing and actually creating more unique, like one-off videos, stuff that I might use on social, but uh, maybe with more of the elements and the stock photos that Descript has to offer, I find it really valuable for that. And now I'm using it, or I'm going to be using it, for screencasting. And what it's, uh, I'm hoping for it to replace is ScreenFlow, which I've been using now for, God, it feels like 15 years. It feels like it hasn't changed in 15 years. Uh, and that's probably, you know, you could look at that as a good thing or a bad thing. I just feel like it hasn't been innovating fast enough. And, you know, why not consolidate my workflow into a tool that I use for a lot of things in my content creation uh, career? So, uh, really excited to dive into some of the new features that uh, that Descript has to offer. I also use something called Screen Studio, which I've been using for a little while. Um, it's nice for short form screen casts, like uh, you know, quick little demos at maximum. I like to like stop using it at the five to eight minute mark because anything longer than a timeline like that, I think that at its in its current form, it's just too simplified of a tool set. Um, for like long form edits, like things that you're going to want to be doing a lot, like moving the camera, transitions, uh, text overlays. Once you start wanting to do that, you know, you're probably looking at either, you know, longer form videos or you need something like Descript to make all the other assets for you. So um, it's uh, a little too easy. So that's a lot of like what I'm hopefully replacing with uh, Descript. So the biggest change, the most major change uh, that Descript uh, has put into the screen recording uh, features is now the camera is its own separate, I'll call it a track because I can move it around. Maybe I'll call it a layer. I actually don't know what they technically call it. Um, the one thing that ScreenFlow does is it records your screen, your camera, and your audio um, all separately. So it is nice in that regard because you you have a lot more flexibility with that. And up until this point, Descript, when you record screen recording, uh, when you were screen recording, uh, all you were doing is like capturing one big flat file and you couldn't like move that camera around. And you certainly couldn't when you zoomed and panned into different areas of your screen recording, which you're obviously going to do. You're going to punch into something. You're going to maybe move to the side and when you do that, you would lose the camera perspective. Like it would just go off the screen because it was baked into the file. But now this will move around and you can reshape this and uh, do all kinds of fun things with it. And it's definitely like the thing that said, okay, I will come back to this app and test it out. So the second uh, great thing that they've updated is uh, the timeline below. For many years, Descript was sort of uh, passing off the timeline, like we don't need to be there, uh, editors don't need that, all we need is this tech stuff up here. And I sadly not the case, uh, you know, for a lot of us who, you know, do this work professionally and we do it a lot. I mean, for me, I'm not an advanced video editor by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but I like to get in and punch into the, um, you know, pixel perfect areas to make my transitions, to cut things. And it is by far much easier when I'm doing it down here in the timeline, looking at waveforms, uh, being able to understand like when somebody's talking, when not. Um, I like all the new... Uh, additions to the layer, things are much more intuitive and performance is getting faster. And I would say like, I know as the editor, I know like where my different scenes are. Um, I'm not really good at uh, markers, but you can see the markers here. Um, but I, I can just visually tell like what's happening in these scenes here just by these layers. So it's great that they've added this. It makes it easy to punch in to, to know these areas. And you can enable this by going to your settings and then um, enabling the new timeline in the labs section, which is uh, like a, a beta preview. So I guess, you know, take it with your own risk, but it's been working fine for me. Um, 
they're changing the way scenes are laid out. And when you have the new labs uh, timeline on, the scenes go in line to the text. I don't know how much I love that. I do like the aggregate of the scenes on the left-hand side in the sort of default way. It allows you to jump around easily. Um, and that's really helpful when you have a sh short video or very few scenes in a, in a video because it's, it's relatively easy. If you have a lot, then it's harder to know when it's aggregate on the left like that, like where that's playing out in the timeline. So now to sort of compensate for that, they've put that in between the text, which it, I mean, it works. I don't know if I love it yet, but it, it works. Um, but the cool thing is you can quickly get to, um, you know, any of these uh, features like changing the layout and uh, changing the transition. And these two areas are also key for screen recorders or <laughs> screencasters uh, who are doing a lot of screencasts because it's super easy to make the transition, which is, uh, which is important. And if you want to have different layouts, um, let me move this over here. I'm in the web version, so apparently they're not loading right now, which is not good when, when we're screencasting. Uh, but I'll show you a sample of their new layouts. If I zoom out and punch in over here, well, we can go to the beginning of this video. So this is a layout, and all it is is like helping move that, uh, that lower third uh, text box. Uh, this is a layout, sort of how the camera and the text... Uh, position themselves. If we come over here, this is another one with the text on the left and camera on the right. So these are fantastic to be able to enhance these uh, screencasts and not just have like the talking head in the corner and the rest of the screen on the screen. Uh, so it's nice that they have th this extra stuff. And again, you can access that really quickly uh, by switching the layout and switching the transitions right here. That makes a whole heck of a difference. Okay, here's another thing that I wanted to show off um, that I think only Descript can do, uh, especially better than its competition. And this is sort of something that's baked into Descript. You're not going to be able to get this uh, anywhere else, but, or at least as of this recording, <laughs> Descript has these elements that you can bring in. And one of the elements is a timer, which can count down. So when we go into uh, a little bit further into this this segment here, you can see the prompt ends in 40 seconds. I'm just going to play this, videos. Add videos. and you'll see that how that timer ticks down. That timer will count down up until the next marker uh, in the timeline. So it allows me to make these little experiences in the screencast that, uh, like, prompt ends in 44 seconds. In this case, I'm writing this long sort of uh, uh, ChatGPT prompt, and I know that some viewers who might be more experienced be like, okay, I don't need to see you write out this whole prompt, but I wanted to show people who wanted to see it in its entirety. Uh, it gives them a sort of like little experience that says, okay, this is going to end. Let me just skip ahead maybe, uh, which you know I think is, is kind of unique. And then if we go into using some of the stock assets that uh, Descript has, um, I made this little subscribe call to action. I brought in um, sound effects from their stock audio effects. And the visuals came from uh, Giphy stickers. This one in particular uh, came from Giphy stickers and it just happened to work, uh, but it didn't have any sound. And when I play it, prompt to build the code. so I added those sound effects uh, in accordance to the motions, obviously super easy, just line it up to the motion. Nothing really uh, revolutionary there. I would love if I could save these as like another asset to bring in. I'd also love if I could bring in uh, other assets that I've made inside Descript and put them in my uh, project. Like if there was a shared uh, file like, and I could save this, that'd be awesome. I could bring that in and out of, um, in and out of my project. And the last thing, which I caught myself saying, I can't believe you did that with AI and also uh, I can't believe how lazy I was <laughs> with AI in this section. One of the interesting things that Descript has is this um, image generator inside of uh, natively inside of uh, ChatGPT, obviously with their investments from OpenAI. And I made this ChatGPT logo, which goes into my uh into my scene. Uh, I made this WordPress logo and I just put it in here because I'm talking about WordPress here and I'm talking about ChatGPT here. I had to go get Claude, GitHub, and Cursor because it failed miserably at those. But I was just like, man, I, I'm at this point now where I, 
my workflow, I might not even have to leave to go get um, an asset from Google Images and or find it on some brand's website and bring it in. So uh, it's like scary and fun at the same time. So <laughs> nice little feature uh, potentially for us. Uh, screencasters out there. That's all I wanted to show you. Just want to give you some updates and some insights from how I use Descript and some of their latest software. If you're a podcaster and you're here on the channel and you're wondering, hey, how can I get free, uh, uh, free promotion of my podcast? How can I get more listeners, especially those who love podcasts? We can do a podcast interview here at the podcast setup where we talk about other people's podcast setups. So if that's you and you're interested, go to thepodcastsetup.com, click on the little podcast interview link up top, fill out the form, and then we can connect on doing an interview talking all about your podcast setup. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.